Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to take a look a bit more in detail at some examples of electromagnetic waves. And the first one we're going to look at, which is the most familiar to you and I, is light. So here we're talking about visible light, and that is of course the light that we can see. Now normally the light that we get uh, from the sun and from a light bulb, etc. is known as white light. White light. Now white light contains all the colours of the spectrum. Okay, now you might have seen a light spectrum before, but they look something like this. So, visible light isn't just, you know, one wavelength of light. There's no category, for example, microwaves, radio waves, um, gamma rays. None of those have a single wavelength. It's all a continuous spectrum. So, for example, in visible light, you have wavelengths of around about, let's say, 350 nanometers to around about 700 nanometers. Okay, and that means that visible light can take any wavelength of between those two uh, values. So for example, 487 nanometers will be in the middle. You could have 592 nanometers. They would all still be visible light, but they would be slightly different colors, okay? Now it turns out that the lowest wavelengths are at the violet end, okay? So the violet end is over here. The highest wavelengths are at the red end. And that means that red, let's use the right color, that means that red light, as it has the highest wavelength, it has the lowest energy. So you'll probably remember that from the last video. Lowest energy is the highest wavelength. Um, and that's because it also has the lowest frequency. Whereas if we go over to the violet side, okay, this one, so violet, will have the highest energy. That's because it's got the highest frequency and the lowest wavelength out of the visible light. Now, if we move further this way and we get even smaller wavelengths, then we go from violet to ultraviolet, okay? And that's why it's called UV, because it's next to the violet. If we go from red light this way, then we'll go to infrared light, okay? Because it's next to the red light. So it is a spectrum. There's no sort of definite stop point, there is an overlap between visible light, UV, and red and infrared. Now, one interesting example of how light works is within cameras. Like cameras. Okay, now let's say, for example, we have a camera lens. Now, this could be any camera lens. Um, they come in all different sizes and all different qualities. But if we have light coming in like this, okay, because obviously the lens is going to pick up the light uh, from your surroundings. The lens will then focus that light onto something. Now, in the case of a digital camera, it's focused onto a sensor. So if this is the lens, this is a sensor. Okay, so you've probably heard with smartphones, if you've watched reviews of smartphones, people talk about how good the sensor is on a camera. And that's what they're talking about here. So you could have an 8 megapixel sensor, you could have a 12 megapixel sensor and so on. Because the sensor contains tiny little dots and they are called pixels. And each pixel, okay, will give you a dot of color. So the light is focused onto these pixels and the color of those pixels gives you your digital photograph. Now if you have, let's say for example, 8 megapixels, well mega in real terms just means million. So it means that you have 8 million of those little dots of light. Okay, so when the photograph is taken, those pixels are all remembered, and that is what actually an image is. Now, if, for example, your camera is not a digital camera, it's an old film camera, then what you have is you have the film. So the lens focuses the light onto the film. Okay, so this could be film. Now, the film is light sensitive, so when the light hits it, it changes um, in order to display that image. And so that is the difference between a digital camera and a film camera. Now let's recap quickly on infrared, because obviously we have looked at this in a previous video. Now infrared is used in a variety of different ways. One important thing about infrared is it is given off when you have heat. So heat is given off um, by an object, it will be releasing infrared. So anything that's hot is releasing infrared radiation. 
And so that means that you can use infrared to detect heat. Okay, if we can detect infrared radiation, the amount of infrared radiation is going to uh, tell you the amount of heat, so how hot something is. And we use this in IR scanners. So IR scanners are used in the medicine industry or the medical profession. Okay, so these can detect can detect hot spots. So literally spots on your body which are hotter than they should be, and that can equal health issues. Reason for that, because it might be there's too much blood in a certain place and your blood is going to make things hotter because your blood is kept at 37 degrees. If you've got too much blood in one area, then you'll have a lot of infrared being given off. So these hot spots could show you where there are health issues. Okay, I'm gonna write in white here because I think it's clearer. But another thing which IR is used for, infrared is used for, is optical fibers. And you might have heard of fiber optic broadband which is great, it means your broadband can go way faster. And these actually use infrared inside um, optical cables. And the reason why we use infrared instead of um, visible light, because you think visible light actually has more energy in it than infrared does. So if we wanna carry loads of information, why don't we just use visible light rather than infrared? The reason being is that in the optical cables, okay, so in the optical cables, Infrared is absorbed less than visible, than visible light. I'm just going to say vis light. That's important because if all your energy is being absorbed by the cable, that means it's not getting to the place where it needs to go. So if we can make the energy be absorbed less by the cable using infrared, it means that we are way more efficient with that energy. Whereas if we use light, a lot of it is absorbed by the cable and it means that um, rather than being transferred to where we want it to go, a lot of the energy is just being wasted inside the cable. Okay, so there are many other uses of infrared, but I do have a separate video on infrared. If you haven't seen that, then please do go and take a look at that. So the next one we're gonna look at are microwaves microwaves. Okay, now in the spectrum, if we remember from the last video, in the spectrum microwaves have the second longest wavelength. So microwaves are here, just be between infrared and radio waves. So they have a shorter wavelength than radio waves, but longer wavelength than everything else. Now the most common use for microwaves is communication. Okay, this includes things like mobile phones and also satellite TV. And the reason why we can use them is because they can pass through the atmosphere. And therefore, they can reach satellites which are orbiting the Earth. So, reaching, reaching the satellites, okay. And we can use them as beams. So, we can use them as beams from one place to another. For example, in communication, if you have a microwave here that will go out and it will reach a satellite. This is an awful drawing, but it's just to show you an example. And then a beam may come back and it will reach another location, okay? And this means that we can get less spreading out. So less spreading out of the signal, and that reduces interference. And we might get that spreading out with things like radio waves. Okay, and so finally we move on to radio waves. Radio waves. Now, if we take a look at the spectrum from the last video again, radio waves are on the far left here because they have the longest wavelength out of everything in the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, and radio waves are mostly used as well for communications, but they are used slightly differently to radio waves, uh, sorry, to microwaves. So, communication. Now, as an example, um, our wireless internet, that is mostly controlled by radio waves. Things like Bluetooth as well. So Bluetooth, you have a Bluetooth radio. The reason it's called a Bluetooth radio is because it operates under radio waves. Okay, now these connections, uh, such as Bluetooth and the internet, they operate generally at around 2,400, 2,400, sorry, million. So I'm just gonna write it. The number million hertz. Okay, you've probably seen that because on your internet router, it will tell you that you have a connection of 
gigahertz. And that's exactly the same as 2,400 million hertz. Okay, let's just make that clearer. Now, this means that they can operate at low power because they have such high frequencies. And they generally have a fairly short range. You're looking at around about 10 meters-ish. So obviously if you go further than that, you can't pick up an internet connection from your router or you can't connect to something via Bluetooth. Now, typically we're going to have long wavelengths with radio waves um, and you're looking at around about 300,000 hertz at least. So you're looking in general more than 300,000 hertz in terms of frequency. And that means in terms of wavelength, you're looking at around about the meters or above. So you're looking in terms of meters or that will carry on to kilometers. So these are actually very large. On the other side, if you went down to things like x-rays and things like that, remember we said that we're looking at a million, million, millionth of a meter in extreme cases. So there is a massive difference in the wavelengths of different um, forms of electromagnetic uh, radiation. Okay, and so that is just a brief overview of the different uses and properties of the different types of electromagnetic radiation. We didn't go into everything because we didn't have a look at gamma rays or x-rays, okay? But for this chapter um, and this part of your course, you only need to look at these ones. So I'm going to stop there. I hope that helped. Um, if you do have any questions on this topic, then please feel free to send me a direct email using the link below or comment in the box and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next video.